Welcome to the Holy Week services. This is Monday 29th of March, our first Holy Week service this Easter. It's wonderful you have found your way here. My name is Miriam Murphy. I'm the Young Peoples and Families Worker here at Claremont Parish Church. And today joining me at this service is Mardo and members of my own family, Jim, Sato, Domenica, Mia and Sophia Jolin Murphy. We are going to first worship God with this song. Luke 19, verses 45 to 48. Jesus clears the temple again. Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the people selling animals for sacrifices. He said to them, The scriptures declare, My temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. After that, he taught daily in the temple, but the leading priests the teachers of religious law and the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they could think of nothing because all the people hung on every word he said. What do you associate with Jesus? What words or connotations or associations do you make when you hear his name? That's why I asked the young people of Renew and Crossword. On your screen are the responses put into a word cloud. The more common responses are the bigger words, son, God, love, gentle. The ones around about them are more of the individual responses, ones that they associated, but maybe others didn't. And there's some that are in there that I think 
are good to reflect on. Different, controversial, debatable. What are your responses to that question? What do you associate with Jesus? If you had only three words, what would you say Jesus is? For the people of Jerusalem at that time, Jesus was king. It's strange to think of it in that way, the week leading up to his death and thinking of him as a king. But on Palm Sunday, he is welcomed into Jerusalem as a king. He is held in high regard. Even the Pharisees who want to kill him think of him as a teacher, something that's still a really important role in their society. Jesus was a very influential figure. Yet he went into the temple and we see his anger. How often do we think of Jesus as someone who is angry? Does that really fit in with the words love, kind, gentle? How often have you played a game of Monopoly that ended with the table being flipped and thought that was a gentle game? It doesn't happen. But what Jesus is angry about is the more important issue. It's not that Jesus was angry that is shocking, but actually the things that are happening that were shocking. People trading in the temple, it becoming a den of robbers. Jesus was fighting against injustice. He was fighting against corruption inside the temple. We see Jesus' anger come out when people are being purposefully unloving, unkind and ungentle to those around them. When was the last time you got angry? And what were you angry about? Maybe you were angry earlier on today. Maybe it was yesterday, last week, last month. Maybe you were angry about something you read in the news, a social media post. Or maybe things just weren't going your way one day. For Jesus, what made him angry was injustice. Was people purposefully disadvantaging other people. And Jesus was particularly noteworthy because he didn't shy away from confrontation. How many times have we gotten angry about something, but instead of addressing the issue, we act passive aggressively. It's fine, we say, when actually it's not. Jesus wasn't like that. When Jesus saw injustice, when Jesus saw, th saw things that made him angry, he would explicitly fight against them. When I was growing up, a common thing for young people to wear was a band around their wrist with WWJD. What would Jesus do? Well, Jesus, when he saw injustice, turned over tables, fought against the establishment and said, this is wrong. And when he did that, it made waves in this community. It made a difference. In fact, we then see after Jesus has cleared out the temple, he's teaching there. He's bringing back the sanctity and purity of this temple and people hang on his every words. So I encourage you, when you see injustice, when you see things that are happening around you that you know are wrong, what are you doing to be like Jesus? What are you doing to disrupt them and confront them in a righteous way? You are the word of the beginning one with God, the Lord Most High. For hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. 
didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Your sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name verse 9 to 19. Then he began to tell the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, leased it to the vine dressers, and went into a far country for a long time. Now at vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the vine dressers beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again he sent another servant, and they beat him also, treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him, and cast him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. But when the vine dressers saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance might be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy you those vine dressers, and gave the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, Certainly not. Then he looked at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priest and the scribes that very hour sought to lay hands on him, but they feared the people. For they knew he had spoken this parable against them.
Well, it's a very confusing picture. It's like a kind of a tower thing in the middle. And on one side, it looks very, very deadly. I don't know what's happening over there. And the other side looks very calm and delightful. Well, I think I think maybe the middle part meant to represent the earth and maybe like the vines. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. And then maybe over here is meant to be like hell or whatever. And then this is like heaven. And people are just getting thrown out. People were throwing people out. And then um, I'm not sure. Well, if I look at this side, this half of it, I'm like, oh, nice and peaceful. But look at the other side, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, like, it's a bit weird. Do you know what Bible, a story that is about? No, can't really think. None of them come to mind. Can you find Jesus in the picture? Maybe he's the person knocking on the door, coming to earth. Maybe? That would make sense, I guess. So I'm not sure what the vines are meant to represent, though. What do you see? I see a truck and a guy knocking on this door. And on the other side of this wall, there's like people getting flung out among a pile of like dead skeletons, well, dead bodies. And then the other side it's like this beautiful world with like all the green and all the houses and some mountains in the back. How does it make you feel? Uh, it's kind of like, it's like this one side is beautiful and peaceful while the other one is so decayed and just destroyed and it's kind of like like, for me, it's kind of like how it comes up sometimes people who are, have like more privilege, they have this world but they can't ever see what's going on behind it. Or like, in general, sometimes you can't see what's going behind someone's life, they may look like so perfect, but it's just not. Because it has the two sides and they, each side can't see each other. And there's groups in the middle, so maybe there's some mediator with crosses in the middle as well. Can you see Jesus in the picture? Could be people percepted as Jesus, which could be the guy who's first knocking and then he gets thrown out. So it's like for his crucifixion, he went from a perfect life to a bad life or something. Well, into our sins. Who are the people that are throwing him? Um, I'm not sure. They're wearing red, which has connotations of danger and blood and violence. Tower trees, car, man. Uh, a wine press, possibly, and lots of crosses within that, representing, I guess, to me, um, death and uh, being crushed and producing fruit at the same time. And a man knocking on the door and somebody throwing some fr somebody throwing somebody out and. A load of remnants of bodies. Skeletons. What does it make you feel? Um, hmm. It's a bit like a, a storyboard in one go. It's like, yeah, joy, happiness, nice greenery, and then um, death. So, um, I guess it makes me feel disturbed, um, but it's a bit like a reality check as well. It's life. Do you see Jesus in the picture? Um, here. Yeah. Um, knocking on the door. And for me, the door is somebody's heart knocking on the door, somebody's heart, Jesus knocking on the door. That's why I see Jesus. The same man, do you see him anywhere else? Uh, being thrown out. Into the, uh, 
pile of skeletons' bones being thrown out of the, uh, the the wine press, the vineyard. Who is throwing him out? I would guess that would be the the uh, the tenants, the 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 people who are renting that place. And they don't want Jesus there, do they? Let us pray. God, we pray that we would be disruptors of injustice. That we would be prayerfully confrontational. That when we see things in our world that do not fit in with your grand picture, that we would fight against them. Lord, in a world that is broken, in a world that needs healing, we pray that we would see your work be done. That in this week that leads up to your sacrifice, your death, and then your resurrection, I pray that we would be challenged in our thinking, that we would change for the better, and that we would go into the rest of the services this week with a mind open to being changed. Lord, I want to thank you for your son. I want to thank you for everything you do for us. And we pray in your name. Amen. <laughs>